What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you had a great holiday weekend for Christmas. Spend time with family and friends and I hope you're looking forward to New Year's. Uh, if you're listening to this video after New Year's, Happy New Year. Let's go. 2023 is a big year. This is your year. This is the year to change your life. I was reading a quote the other day actually um, by one of the guys I looked up to for a very long time uh, and still do. Uh, Brandon Turner. As a lot of you guys know, if you follow real estate, investing, bigger pockets, you probably know of him. You know, he made this post and it was like, what would happen if you focused a full year on personal growth, on business, on health, on your diet? You were super devoted to it, nothing brought you off track, and you were just super focused. Where would you get? And, you know, for me, 2022 was a lot of that but sort of like flying blind for most of it, right? I, you know, I, I was completely done my W-2 job this past year. Um, into 2021, I, I was for, for a good amount of it as well, but really 2022 was like figuring out for me, what am I gonna be doing moving forward? So 2022, uh, you know, we purchased a good amount of, of real estate. We're up to 250 multifamily apartments uh, with some partners, some by myself, some with partners. Uh, we are, you know, we're growing pretty rapidly in that space. However, we started pumping the brakes at the end of the year because interest rates started going up, right? We're, you know, we're at sixes, six and a half. People still want super high, crazy amounts for their property. And it, your numbers just haven't made sense. And so I really doubled down on off market, direct mail marketing. The last week, I've got six properties under agreement. And so, well, you know, the, and, and actually most of these are going to be wholesales or flips. So really what 2022 taught me was I need to have more cash on hand. And so, you know, I, I had been okay for the most part over 2019, 2020, 2021, even like the start of 2022. But what happened was when I w wasn't able to buy more rentals and I realized that, okay, I can't really sell these things anymore for the price that they were worth before, I need to generate a mass amount of cash to keep this business flowing. And so I started to wholesale and I started to flip properties. Um, you know, we went from, you know, making five, 10, 15, 20,000 a month to 50, 60, sometimes 150,000 a month, wholesaling and flipping multifamily property. Now, two families, three families, six units, I did a 10 unit, right? And so I like to stick to that. And so moving forward in 2023, what I realized one aspect of my business is gonna be a multifamily wholesaling and flipping company. And so we're going to start really escalating our direct to seller. We sent out 7,000 letters this past month to eight units in larger buildings. We're going to, we're going to, send, we're going to alternate. So we're going to send another 7,000 letters out next month. And it's going to be to twos, threes, fours, fives, to sixes, uh, and sevens. Uh, and so between this marketing, between those two, I should be able to get a good amount of flips of the twos, threes, and et cetera, around that range and, and try to target the FHA buyer. Um, over the next year or so, and I've got five of those going right now. And actually, I'm super stoked about these because it's really fun, right? You're gonna, we're gonna take one, let's call it a two family. Uh, I have one in Providence right now. One of the units is beautiful. It's got granite countertops, custom cabinets, beautiful flooring. Uh, we spent $30,000 in one unit. The upstairs unit, we spent 15,000. It's renter quality. Now, when somebody walks in there and they're like, I wanna, you know, I'm looking to house hack. I can't afford a single family house. I don't wanna pay rent. What can I afford? Ding, ding, you can afford a multifamily property, 3.5% down, FHA loan. We're talking like 10, 15, maybe $20,000 out of pocket to get into a half a million dollar multifamily home. Now, they're going to go move into this, live in this beautiful unit, which is essentially living in a single family house because it's so luxurious. Uh, and then you have the rent from upstairs covering at least half that mortgage payment, right? So maybe you're paying $1,500 a month instead of $2,000 or $2,300 to live in Providence. Or maybe even less if you're lucky and get creative. Right, and so that's an example of what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing a lot of twos, threes, um, flips. And on the flip side of that, we're gonna be wholesaling six, eight, 10, 20, 50 unit apartment buildings. You know, I, I just locked uh, a six unit up uh, in a town local in Blackstone, Massachusetts. Um, the lady's super nice. Uh, she wanted a good amount of money for this property. I told her I wasn't gonna be able to get that high. I like to look at these wholesales uh, and as if I was going to purchase them. What number is it that I need to purchase this and then I need to knock it down even more to make a wholesale fee? This property was built in 1960, literally needed $0 of work. She wanted 700, I told her 625, we met in the middle of 650. Honestly, 700 works. 
right? And so I locked it up at 650, went out, found a buddy of mine, a buddy of mine had a buyer who was looking for that. He's an agent. His buyer is going to pay him a 2% agent fee on top of that. So what's that? 14 grand on top of the 700. I make $50,000. He makes $14,000. I throw him a little bit under the table for saying thank you. Uh, and we move on, right? So that's, 50, that's let's call it $47,000, $48,000 profit on a six unit property. Now, the reason I'm really going to hammer this in 2023 is because 50,000 bucks from one deal. I, I mean, if I just did two or three of those a month, we're talking $150,000 a month. I'd be able to build up that cash reserve that I'm looking for uh, pretty quickly. And you know, you're probably saying, what is a cash reserve, right? Well, like how much, how much are we talking? Well, to be honest, a lot of, I'm going to get a lot of crap for this, but you know, a lot of people say that, you know, having cash in the bank is useless and it, you know, it's declining your, your the value and blah, 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 inflation. And I agree, right? I, I think to an extent, however, we're in a recession right now and we're going into a recession. I have never been cash heavy. And what I mean by that is I always spin it back out. I'm always buying property, I'm always rehabbing, I'm always covering something, right? And so my plan for the next 12 to 24 months is strictly to build an insane cash amount. And I'm talking, you know, at least over a million bucks in the bank that is untouchable, not including the operating expenses for each property and partnerships and all that kind of stuff. And so I don't, I'm just being open with you guys on here. That is the goal. Um, by the end of 2023, just to be, just to sit there. I don't even want to, I don't want to touch it. I just want to sit there. I, at that point, I can quite literally withstand anything uh, in my portfolio. And as I grow, I'll need more. And that's why I really believe that those six, eight, 10, 20, even if it's a hundred unit apartment building that I, that I can assign and make 50, 100, 200, maybe three or $400,000 on an assignment fee, the larger they get, that is the position I'd like to be in. That's the real estate plan moving forward. And of course, we're gonna be buying and holding. I'm gonna buy another 100 units in 2023, uh, and we're gonna buy and hold those. And the purpose of that really is for taxes. Uh, you know, you make a couple million dollars a year, you need to offset that, otherwise you're gonna be writing a fat check to the IRS. Nobody wants to do that. So by utilizing cost segregation studies, depreciation, and all that other goodness, uh, bonus depreciation, all that good stuff, uh, we can knock that tax bill down. Um, all right. Moving on to the next thing I realized in 2022 is that I don't have a machine, right? I, I don't have a business that can generate without me there. And I call it get hit by a bus syndrome, right? If I, if I went outside and I crossed the street and I got drilled by a freaking bus, my business would be done, right? I'd be stuck in the hospital or, or I'd be dead, right? And nothing, nothing, there's nothing left. I mean, I have a rental portfolio, but I don't live off that income, right? There's no business that's just going to continue to gen generate. Uh, and so I really need to build a machine and I like the real estate space. I don't know if I'm sold on building a machine just in real estate. Um, a lot of you guys know I am buying a restaurant, uh, actually six of them. Uh, so one restaurant a year for the next six years, we have to open up with a partner. That's great. That's going to be its own little machine, but I really need to build something else. I've, to I've toyed with a landscaping company. I've toyed with a construction company. I've toyed with a cleaning company. Um, I'm a little bit stuck. I'd, I'd love to hear your comments. Should I be buying one of these or should I be starting one? And, you know, I, I really think moving forward, my personality fits well with purchasing businesses. You know, I have no doubt by the time I'm 35 years old that I'll probably own 20 or 30 businesses. Um, and, you know, none of those I hope to start from scratch uh, unless, <laughs> unless that's, you know, it's warranted. But I, I guess the purpose of me asking this question to you guys is I'm pretty busy. I still have a lot of time though, right? Like I have a ton of time, but Real estate's great and it funds a lot of the things I do in my life and it funds multifamily and everything like that. But I really want to build some sort of machine. And I don't necessarily know that wholesaling and flipping is the easiest way to do that. I would like something a little bit more recession proof, a little bit more maybe service based. And so, I don't know, I'm going to make a video in a couple weeks. I'm going to make a decision with it. I'm going to go buy that company or build the company uh, and go from there. Um, all right, so that was pretty much so 2022. So moving into 2023, it's going to be buy some sort of service business. It's going to be acquire 100 buy and hold units. It's going to be wholesale at least two to three, six plus, or five plus unit properties. And it's going to be flip three to four duplex, triplex, quad, somewhere around there, multifamily properties per month, make $2 million in net income um, and have a million bucks in the bank by the end of 2023. That's business goals. Personal goals, go to Europe, 
We're going to Maui for two weeks, so that's awful. I want to go to Europe. I want to add a car to my car collection. Uh, and I want to ensure that I have a, every single Thursday is going to be date night for my wife and I. Whether that's going out to eat, whether it's just staying home watching a movie, whether it's you know going for a run with the dogs for a half hour, 45 minutes. It has to be every Thursday, no matter what, block the schedule out. Uh, and those are my big ones for 2023. So I'd love to hear what you guys' goals are. Please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, you better hit the like and subscribe button. You're watching my videos, fool. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but seriously, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out, pushes these videos out to more people. More people can learn uh, not just how to set goals and you know what's going on in my world, but how to buy real estate and how to invest in real estate. So thank you for watching. Until next time, Happy New Year!